In this video, we'll talk about how we can find the reduction formulas that can be used to solve trigonometric integral problems using integrations by parts. So we want to find the reduction formula for sine of the nx, the one that we used in the last problem to solve that really long and annoying problem. So the trick here is to use integration by parts. And it's the fact that we have these trig functions that have special properties that we can end up solving these out at all. So what do we need to do integration by parts? Well, we have to pick a u and a dv, and the important constraint we have to make sure we meet is that the dv is something we know how to integrate. So I want to visualize sine of the nx dx as a product u dv, where I know how to integrate the dv term. What is a good choice there for the dv term for something that I know how to integrate? Well, I can integrate one sine really easily. So let's pick one sine dx to be our dv term and put the rest in the u term. That gives us the following for our table. Now we can fill in the rest. Well, since dv is just sine, v is then minus cosine. And for du, I can find that derivative using the power rule and the chain rule. It'll be n minus 1 sine to the n minus 2 of x, and then chain rule times cosine of x dx. And now I can write out the integration by parts. So integral of u dv, which is sine to the n of x dx, equals uv, so minus sine to the n minus 1 of x cosine of x, minus the integral of v du, negative cosine of x, times n minus 1 sine to the n minus 2 of x cosine of x dx. And I'm going to rewrite that last integral a little bit, cancel the minus signs and put the cosines together to give me the following. Negative sine to the n minus 1 of x cosine of x, n minus 1 integral sine to the n minus 2 of x cosine squared of x dx. And now to try to make this a little bit clearer what we're doing, I'm going to rewrite the cosine squared in terms of sine squared like we did for our Pythagorean identities before. This is why this process really only works for these trig functions that have this sort of relation between them. So I'm going to rewrite that cosine squared as 1 minus sine squared, which will give me that. And now I can split that last integral into two integrals and look at the problem and see if I can solve it from there. So we'll do that, and that gives us the following. Left-hand side is still just integral of sine to the nx dx. My first term is still sitting here. I then have an n minus 1 integral of sine to the n minus 2 of x, and then minus an n minus 1 integral of sine to the n of x dx. And now this might look familiar from some of these circular integration by parts problems we did last section. I have gotten back to the same integral I was trying to solve for. So what I can do is add this over to the other side. I'm adding an n minus 1 to the one that's already there. That'll give me an n on that side. So n integral of sine to the n of x dx equals the same thing over here. And then dividing through by n gives me the exact reduction formula that we had in the last section to solve those problems. Integral of sine to the n of x dx equals negative 1 over n sine n minus 1 of x cosine of x plus n minus 1 over n integral n minus 2 of x dx. So that's how you derive this reduction formula using integration by parts. The important part of the process is we know it's integration by parts, and then we have to figure out what do we pick for our dv so it's something we can integrate. As another application of the same process, let's find a reduction formula for the integral of secant to the n of x dx for n at least 2. Now we'll see how this becomes useful in the next video, talking about different trig function integrals, but we'll want a formula like this as well for powers of secant. So what can we do here? Well, we again want to use integration by parts, but the question becomes, what is our dv? And the way we want to think about it is, what power of secant is really easy to integrate? And what's really easy to integrate is secant squared, because we know that integrates to tangent. So let's pick secant squared to be our dv, so our v is tangent. This leaves u as secant to the n minus 2 of x, and I can find that derivative using the power rule and chain rule like before. And those would combine to make a secant to the n minus 2 when we write them in the next step. But now we can do integration by parts. So the integral of secant to the n of x dx, that's our u dv, equals uv, so secant to the n minus 2 of x tangent of x, 
minus integral of v du, which will combine to give me the following, where I've combined this tangent with this tangent to make the tangent squared in that formula. And now we're going to play the same trick again. I want to rewrite tangent in terms of secant squared. And we know that the Pythagorean identity tells us that 1 plus tangent equals secant squared. So I can replace the tangent squared by a secant squared minus 1, and then split the integrals and play the same game like before. I then see that this integral matches this one. I can add that over, giving me an n minus 1 on that side. And then I can divide through by n minus 1 to give me my final formula here. And there's your reduction formula for secant. There's other ones you can get for cosine and for tangent, but these are the ones that you really want to have in mind when you're trying to solve these trig integral problems. So here's how you get the reduction formulas, and we saw in the last video how to apply the sine one. We'll see in the next set as well how to apply this secant one to solve similar but slightly different trigonometric integral problems.